Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's Sunday, April 9th, 2023. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me carry. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Indeterminate Length, episode number 690. Gary, uh, that thing above your head. Boop. What the what's, thing? <laughs> but what's what's that thirty thing about? <laughs> Between me and Damon, it's above you. Yeah. What about it? Well, well, what's it doing there? <laughs> well, there's three of them. If you didn't notice, yeah. it's a triptych. There's one for thirty, one for forty, and one for fifty. None of us are in our 30s anymore. Oh, oh. We were. We were at one time. It's called, what do you call that? a really weird segue. Gary, what, what <laughs> the... Why did you put a 30, 40, and a 50? Much less the 30, and none of us are in our 30s. But we were. We were at one time. See, it's a progression of time. It's showing the passage of milestone birthdays. Okay. <laughs> and why do you ask? I'm glad no, you asked. Right. <laughs> so, hold on. I gotta. <laughs> when you did the intro about the date, I got the giggles because you you said it like you questioned it. And it made me think I got it wrong, so then I double checked it. I was like, "Nope, I got it right on the dock." <laughs> anyway, so what you're saying is none of us are in our 30s. So why do we even have 30s here? Because none of us are in our 60s yet. <laughs> True, although that's a bit a bit of a bit away. I mean, technically, none of us are in our fifties yet either. But that 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 is that is going to happen. One of us are rapidly. creepy. Is creepy never closer, much faster than the other two. <laughs> yeah, someone's going to hit fifty at light speed. Let's put it that way. So, <laughs> no, I can understand the fifty. <laughs> well, so here's the thing. Um, it's a let's talk about sex. <clears throat> So we've aged out of our 20s and our 30s, as Jeff pointed out. Um, So I wanted to ask the question, like, now that we're older, how have things changed when it comes to sex? Well, I'm no longer a slut. Oh, okay. Well, that le- that leads into something that we'll, we'll probably touch base on. Oh. Plus, Craigslist Plus... isn't around anymore. Oh, oh, sure. Blame it on Craigslist. <laughs> It was one of the many factors. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> of all the things, I was expecting Jeff to say it wasn't. <laughs> well, I'm no longer a slut. I'm like, <laughs> uh, I mean, it just it just the, the way it was said so matter of factly. It just <laughs> it was like my apartment sounds great, and I don't want to go anywhere. Hmm. <laughs> That's fair. Oh my gosh! Oh. But you know, well, I'm I mean, I, okay well, with that. Well, I, I mean, I I'll agree with you that there is a parallel, perhaps, between the three of us. I will not speak on Damon's behalf. 
mm-hmm. but I too have not been as active as I was when I was in my twenties after I came out in college and then graduated college. I was much more active mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, in roll for me. I, I don't, I'm not going to speak for you. Yeah. Yeah. In 20, 23 years ago, uh, going on 24 years ago, when I had kind of my uh, second coming out, <laughs> I want to phrase it. Well, I came out in I came out in ninety two. Mm-hmm. I, I originally came out and I self identified as bisexual. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, uh, uh, I don't know what I want to say. Slowly moved into the recognition that the reality was is that I I only really desire to be physical with men and not with uh, women. I see. Mm-hmm. You, gate, you gate off uh, your your sexuality much slower mm-hmm. than I did. Yeah. Because um, I was on the, the buy now gay later plan. On, And then for me in 99 is really, I mean, I had discovered the beer community a few years before that I discovered it back when I was in um, college, actually, before I graduated. So that would have been like mid 90s. But um, in 99, I kind of went to my first bear events and then like came into the bear community. And it was when that happened. I had fun. Um, <laughs> but that's waned <laughs> over time. Okay. Uh, and I don't necessarily think it's for. Um, like, I think it's been consciously done, but I don't think there's been anything real intentional with it. It's not like, oh, I shouldn't be a whore anymore. You know what I mean? Like, like it wasn't a, it wasn't a rationale like that. It was just like, I don't really know if I need to. Wait a minute. People be... were paying you before. Well, when you're professional, you're professional. What can I say? <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> what is this business about shade, David? There's no shade in that. I did have a gentleman once try to pay me. That was very awkward. Um, <laughs> Cause that was not, that was not part of my concept of why we were getting together. Um, that being said, I, I think there was, I, I don't know. Like, and this is the thing is, I don't know if younger generations feel the same way now when mm-hmm. I was younger and I'm going to presume maybe it's equal for the three of us. There was a repression of right. like our identity and so like when you discover who you are and you begin being an authentic individual and part of that authenticity is being a sexual being and mm-hmm. doing things with people and enjoying mm-hmm. doing things with with others i think you have a tendency to um really increase the amount of activity and in a way you peak um soon after Within within reason uh, right. of that coming out, I guess. Yeah, you indulge. Maybe even overindulge. Mm. You would you would you enjoy the the satisfaction of realizing who you are, and with that satisfaction, you want to make sure that you spread it around. Over and over and over and over <laughs> and over again. Um, I was like, for me, um, my sexual awakening, if you want to call it that, was in college, and I was away um, from family, and I was on my own for the first time. So it made sense <laughs> that. Oh, hey, I, I have no one here to tell me no mm. or that it's wrong. Mm. So I enjoyed myself. Right. A lot. Um, well, and I feel like, you know, because we came up of age through the 80s into the 90s and we we had the messaging I talked about this openly at at work recently. Someone was kind of surprised to hear me phrase it this way because I I think they didn't understand 
what it was like to be a self-identified gay male to -hmm. live in a world that you interpreted the message as or the messaging as if you have sex you're gonna die Mm. yeah and i and i think some people are kind of surprised to hear that and i try to explain to them i was like baby it was the 90s like the, the aids epidemic peaked in 96 and 97 as to the number of deaths that were going on around us. So mm-hmm. we were in a, in our formative years. That's all the messaging was. It's like you, you never want to do anything with anybody. you like bodily fluids are a bad thing and you will end up getting a disease and die. End of story. Um, so I think. You know, that th- there was there was a repression in just like a gay identity. There's a repression in terms of like sexual activity because of the the messaging and like the concern about that kind of stuff. And then, you know, you overcome those things um, mm-hmm. and you make decisions. You try to be as um, careful as you can with the things that you do. And I think that we as a culture kind of co-opt or adopt certain concepts or phrases like i think about like anti-mame and the often used quote like life is a banquet and most poor suckers are starving to death and i think like when you when you have a delayed experience in your lifetime because i think for most of us of our generation we didn't have sex when we went through puberty like, you know what I mean? Like, we weren't really doing a whole lot, Damon excluded. That we... <laughs> <laughs> well, and maybe Jeff excluded that. Now that I know the things that I do, I'll just speak for myself. Um, like, you, like, I think I think it's fair to say a number of individuals just weren't, they weren't, do, we weren't doing the things that our, that our teen cohorts were doing and experimenting and like having activities and you know and all that kind of stuff that there was a delay to that i think a a vast number of people of our generation like that happened later as you were saying damon like you got away to college and then you're like oh okay now i can you know figure out if i'm a freak or not um and i did (laughs) and what that and kind of what that means um yeah it's it's rather interesting go- thinking back on that time. I was actually having a conversation about this with um, um, part of the weight management you have to go through uh, with a counselor. You have to speak with someone um, about it. And there was a, we had our conversation. She was like, was there ever a point in time where you're hypersexual? And I was kind of like, yeah, college. Um, and I told her like the truth. I was telling her the truth. Like I went away to college and um I didn't, so, hey, everybody, backstory. Um, I I was playing in middle school. Like, I had a friend, and we played around, and we, I I had sex for three years. Mm -hmm. And then I went away to college, went away to high school, and for four years, I did, I don't want to say nothing, but I didn't, I didn't play with anyone else. Mm -hmm. Then I went away to college, and boom. (laughs) The doors flew open, and um, I was pretty sexual. Mm -hmm. I will admit that. And mentioning kind of hypersexual, I was like, yeah, yeah, you know, multiple partners, those kind of things. Like, that was what I did. Because at the time, I was realizing the truth. Like, I was finally being able to realize my truth. And I wanted to enjoy that pleasure that I had, as you've kind of mentioned, repressed for so long. Mm-hmm. Um, and now that I could, um, it was it was quite the experience. And you know, do I regret certain things? In a ways, yes. Um, there are things I, I mean, I'm not saying I did anything I wasn't actually not proud of, but I, there was a lot of not caring for mm-hmm. me. And that's sort of where, you know, thank heavens, you know, knock on wood, like nothing happened. But 
it was that like ability to have that. I had the access because that was internet. That was like the height for me of the like, internet and chat rooms and AOL and all that shit. And that's where it became pretty, you know, relevant to me that I was exploring and having fun and enjoying what I was enjoying. And I wasn't necessarily thinking about any potential consequences. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah. And now I do not, I don't say have to, but I do think of the consequences more. Um, well, I mean, I think that we could chalk some of that up possibly to just like youth. Youth tends to be ignorant about the impact of things because we haven't had mm-hmm. them yet. Like literally mm-hmm. the impacts in our lives. Um, we also, I think, as a human species tend to take life for granted when we're younger. And as you get older, especially if you are blessed to have individuals in your life who pass on, as you see the generations above you or older than you or before you go away i think the mortality aspect starts to become a thing that you are aware of in in life and how you don't kind of want to fuck around Mm -hmm. (laughs) and like invite shit that you don't want to be dealing with Mm -hmm. but when you're younger i think we i think we kind of feel invincible we have this like you know um I don't know, this disregard for vulnerability in terms of like, you know, our actual life. Yeah. And what that can be. Um, and so, yeah, yeah. I do, th- I, I do think we, we, when we're younger, we really do treat life, especially sexually, like very much as a smorgasbord. And we're just like, I'm going to have a little of this and a little of that, and I'm going to try this and I'm going to do this other thing. And like, you know, um, mm-hmm. and so now we, move ahead and really what I was thinking about in terms of this show topic was, are we falling in lockstep with stereotypes and those stereotypes being that as you get older, you're not as active and you have fewer partners and you do less things. Um, Or is it not so much a stereotype, but a natural occurrence? And I think there's there's a, a bit of a of a duality aspect to consider. I think predominantly most people would say when you are single, you are much more like single and ready to mingle. And like so, you know, you're a bit more frisky and you like do a lot of things, possibly with a lot of partners, because you're not dedicating yourself to an individual. Mm-hmm. Um, you may not own a home. You may not have pets. Do you know what I mean? Like you may have not like found or decided upon a career. So there's so much fluidity in different aspects of your life that you're just like, I'm gonna I'm gonna do all the things, so to speak. Mm-hmm. But then as you as time moves on, and you find yourself making decisions about setting roots by owning a home and having a career. And then developing a family, whether it be just you and a partner or perhaps a couple of specific partners, Mm -hmm. children and or pets. You know what I mean? Like, I think that most people would say that that's the logical process that diminishes the amount of activity. And And it is a little complicated because the bill of goods that we've been sold for a century plus now is like, well... You know, once you're committed to another person, the predominant message is sex is for procreation. And that's kind of what that is. And it's like, well, that sort of doesn't apply. (laughs) It it doesn't apply. (laughs) (laughs) It doesn't. Right. (laughs) But we keep trying. Um, (laughs) Well, you know. Um, but uh, so I think that that's a natural case to be made. Like if you follow the standard life path, progressive milestones or whatever that like, there just will be lesser activity. And yet we're, we're in a time and an age where people are so independent that they literally can make any decisions that they want. 
So like in my field of work, we talk often about the fact that it is well known and has been documented that seniors are people who have sex. And the reason mm. why we say that is because there end up being outbreaks of STIs mm. in like senior living communities <laughs> because mm. they're getting their freak on, but they're not necessarily being like precautionary or using prophylactics. Um, mm. They're also not necessarily getting tested very often because they also come from generations true. where like, well, that was kind of, you know, not really as openly discussed and like you and then the public at large is kind of like they don't want to they don't want to think about grandma and grandpa having sex like they don't you know they that that's a problem you know and right. that just doesn't happen and their generation understandably comes from like you know some of that like i said that messaging about how sex is for procreation and i'm like well guess what like they ain't having babies but they still have <laughs> sex so yeah. they're passing around the clap and that's a thing so <laughs> what <laughs> Wow. Okay. No. <laughs> I mean, not every. Don't, you but know, no, I'm not saying no, about all, but it's like it's like it's, it's, it's weird that we disregard it. It's like we don't think it doesn't happen, and I'm like, are you kidding me? No, I mean, you're you're absolutely right. It, it's weird. Well, not weird. We don't think of it because right. it's it, we don't want to think about it. You don't want to think like you don't want to think about your parents having sex. Like you just don't. Like you. You don't want to have it, but you know they kind of had to have sex or else you wouldn't be here. So, like, <laughs> you know, it has those, right. like, kind of, like, thoughts and we're like, I don't want to, but, and then when you think about, you know, older seniors, as you use, I'll use that word, um, having, you know, relations, it feels, it doesn't, like, it's like, mm, I don't know. And, and I think it's because we don't, Think of it that way. Our 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 thought, you know, what has what this what the world has presented to us is that you get married, you you have a honeymoon, and you've not had any sex before. That's a lie, but you, you you've not had any sex before. You get married, you have sex, then you have kids, mm. and then at some point you stop having kids because you, or you stop having sex. Like there's a point in time, and this is what society has told us. There's a point in time apparently where you stop having sex. Right. You know, and then you die. <laughs> I, I, I've never thought that. I, I've never thought that mainly because I, I think I, I've, I've plenty of heard plenty of times where, where there's a point where you have your kids and then, you stop having kids, but it doesn't mean you would stop having sex because of, uh, you know, somebody gets snipped or you use protection to prevent mm. it. Uh, you know, there's different methods to prevent pregnancy. So I've never, I've never really thought that. I mean, hearing all of your experiences, I feel like I've had a very different experience uh, from all of you because to me, it, probably because I grew up in a household where it's just like, we don't talk about that. Uh, but there was still some sort of mild sex education mm -hmm. where I came from. Uh, where they talked about, you know, where babies come from. Uh, I actually think it was like fourth grade. When they start, they talked a little bit about that and they didn't go into like super detail, but there was talk about condoms and, and, you know, uh, the safe sex. So uh, you have this whole times of you have sex and you're going to die, but I've never really experienced that. It's like, if you have, if you have sex, just make sure it's safe sex. You know, you're you're not gonna die necessarily, and maybe it's just because where I was, it was just I don't know what it is, but like, uh, or or maybe it was this like timing thing because really my well, I have had some of the you know playing around with 
your friends as a kid <laughs> sort of thing. Uh, when I grew up and got to the point where it was actually starting to have sex, it was late 90s, early 2000s. So it was much more known about safe sex and being safe. Having that talk with your status, knowing your status, that sort of thing. So my entire time was a little more carefree, you know, just safe, you know. So I never had in necessarily instilled me the fear of you have sex, you're going to die. I always, it, it was just be careful, you know, be aware. Whoa. And that was just my experience for and so right. that's how I experienced it. That's that's my rant. Not really a rant. It's just sort of telling the yeah. side of the story. It is it's interesting because I know if we're going we're kind of going backwards a little bit, but like those conversations about sex, I have very different conversations about sex because I knew a lot about like heterosexual like procreative sex because mm -hmm. that was the 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 i mentioned it like briefly like family life that was the i remember that so well so vividly um looking up now and it's apparently christian based which kind of bothers me a little bit but um anyway um but again like those that was the programs like i learned about a lot about heterosexual sex but I was not heterosexual. Right. So um, the opposite side of that was the, for me, the religious backgrounds that I had and the repression of those, anything non-hetero. I think it was because I grew up Methodist. Mm. Baptist, so kind of but not really. Um, it's hard to say. Anyway, but with that being said, it just, it was part of the, the it wasn't part of the conversation. Right. So when you realize the reality, um, you do kind of, I, you know, like I said, I kind of went a little crazy. Um, and now here we are thinking about like seniors and and elderly, um, there's a there was a random video I saw on Facebook, one of those reels, and it's from a TV show, and it's about like someone's life alert going off and the ambulance is going to the to the to the apartment building or the you know and they couldn't get in and they burst through the door because they're the life alert's going off and they need to you know save this person's life and they get in and lo and behold it's two elderly people having sex and the alert was going off because the heart rate was too high. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, I mean, it was portrayed in a hilarious manner. Right. And, you know, cause they, you know, the, they were doing it in the couch, like on the couch, they were, they weren't in a bedroom. It was like right there. Like they burst through the door and there they are. Granted, um, and kind of like no one can really, there's one that's kind of like staring, one of the paramedics that's just kind of staring because they think it's a beautiful thing, but, um, the other people are like, you know, averting their eyes and like trying to tell them like, sorry about that. You're, you know, and they explain why they burst in and yeah, it was quite funny. But, it, you know, it was one of these moments where you don't think about it, but we're talking about it now. Like, that right. wouldn't have flown 20 years ago. Well, and, and I was the one thing I was going to say is, Dave, when you were talking about, like, you know, we don't think about our parents having sex. But there's a part of me that's like, but we're going to be there one day. Like, yeah. another 10, 15, 20 years, we are going to be those older, you know, citizens Mm -hmm. And what will what will our activities and, and you know, our choices in that be, um, you know, and so, so 
to the, to the question about the stereotype, I think all stereotypes are based in truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whether or not we like it, um, yeah. whether or not we want to admit it. So I think there is some truth to the fact that, you know, as people age, they have less sex. Um, and there are many factors that could blend into that. But that, so that kind of brings up this, this question about like, you know, what does it mean to get older in general when it comes to having like sex or sexual activities? Oh. Um, go ahead. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I can, I'll, I'll talk about myself personally and get a little, you know, real. Um, I'm on blood pressure medications. Like, okay. uh, I've been on them for a few couple of years now. Mm -hmm. And I have noticed personally that just, you know, it, it takes a little longer to get hard and it takes a lot to maintain that. Mm. And that has affected what I do now in general when I'm having sex. Um, it, you know, that's, that's something that I'm, you know, dealing with and I'm knowing it's a thing. Like I know it's a thing in it cause it wasn't. I was feeling very similar beforehand and not having any issues beforehand, but now that I'm taking the medications, it's kind of happening. And I'm like, oh, well, I can't, I don't want to necessarily blame it just on that, but it could just be, you know, also age and, mm -hmm. um, you know, and is it, is it bad? I don't think so. Um, I enjoy other things just as well. Um, and that's kind of where part of it comes to line. I've learned, I enjoy, I've all, well, I've always have enjoyed being servicing as it mm -hmm. were. Um, but now I tend to do it more often because that's what I, I don't necessarily know if I will every time, if I'm going to be able to like get hard, get off, what have you. So right. why not? please someone else and enjoy doing that. Cause I know that's, I enjoy doing that. Um, I've also learned, we talked, we joked about it at, um, I think part of the conversation last week, which prompted this <laughs> show. Um, my knees hurt. Um, I'm just going <laughs> to put it out there. <laughs> I was thinking about this earlier today. I went and did my laundry. Um, I've been doing my laundry at a laundromat for a long time now. Um, and I went and this staff person was there and they have two rows of dryers, one one above the other. There's a long row of them up above and there's a long row down below. And I don't use the ones down below very much only because like bending over and like reaching into the back and, and that kind of stuff can be difficult. But I'm watching the staff member and they're cleaning like the, the glass doors and doing stuff. And they are constantly up and down off their knees on this like cement floor. Mm -mm. Well, linoleum, but you know, like it's not yeah. padded. And yeah. I was like, and all I kept thinking was, oh, child. <laughs> I was like, use them knees yeah. while you got them because <laughs> you ain't going to have them forever. Like, you're going to come That's a point where it's just child. like, like you're not, you're not going to have them. They're not going to be gonna reliable. Find, you're going to find very quickly. Suddenly, you're going to bid down and you're not going to be able to get back up. And you're going to wonder why. And you're going to be like, yeah. They're gone. It's gone. And there's no really getting it back. Like, there are some things you could probably do. But yeah. um, but I have learned to adapt. You know, I've found ways to make it work. Knee um, pads, head over the edge of the bed. No. Uh, knee pads <laughs> sometimes. Um, head over the bed, no. Uh -uh, no, can't do that. No. Because this does not go well for me. This, yeah, no. Oh. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, Remember, flexibility have... for accessibility. Yes. Right. But right. that's a thing you have to practice. Mm hmm And you really should as you age. Mm hmm Because, like, I agree with Damon. Like, the knees are a thing. Um, being able to, right. you know just you know support your own weight um i find that i don't have the breathing capacity that i used to <laughs> and so you know yep. like uh 
if you if you have reduced lung capacity because you're getting older or you're not being as vigorous in terms of like just general physical activity, that can also be a factor when it comes to doing things with other people because mm-hmm. – Um, and, and we probably haven't talked, I don't know if we've ever actually said this. I'm sure we have somewhere along the way, but like, you know, sucking dick is like, it takes skill. It's not, it's a call to blowjob. It's not, it's called a blowjob for a reason. I'm just saying like it is, (laughs) it is work. It can be work. Um, yeah. So like, and if you don't do it as often, you so to speak are less practiced that has an effect as well because well sure it's like riding a bike and you know how to do it but if you don't do it all the time or with regularity then like you have diminishing returns like in terms of your endurance your stamina like um like it was funny because I, I don't remember who I was talking to about this recently I don't think this was last week um the concern about like getting lockjaw because like <laughs> because you haven't done it very much and it's like and you're like oh i would like that to not be a problem you know mm-hmm. like you know that you that your that your jaw muscles your tongue your throat like you know your face mm-hmm. like that it gets sore or you know and that goes back to the stamina thing like that you get tired easily and like you said, Damon, like taking medications can be a factor. Um, I've been on blood pressure medicine for a few years now myself. Uh, I haven't necessarily noticed a whole lot with it, although it was interesting because I just got a refill. And for some reason, I bothered to read the side effects. And I was like, oh, look at that. That's a known side effect. And I've kind of had that as a thing. How very interesting. So in my head, I'm like, is that can I directly attribute something I've noticed about myself to that as a side effect? I won't know until I stop taking the medicine, but I kind of don't want to stop taking the medicine. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So that's sometimes half of thing. one, six of yeah. yeah. But when you brought I, up about blood pressure different. medicine, it, it, it made me think about like, you know, erectile dysfunction medicines and how we talk about like you, you know, it's kind of, well, I don't know if I want to say well known, but I think now more than ever, some individuals are aware that like if you're taking an ED med to not use poppers because of the effects that can come from that, but you should also be careful with blood pressure meds and ED meds and like poppers, like, you know, like the whole thing kind of like, you know, can, can unfortunately be a a bad outcome if you're not careful. Right. Um, I know just physically I agree like stamina is an issue um body and posture are an issue like you said carrying your weight is an issue it can become an issue Mm -hmm. um and you know and and Jeff you were you you mentioned this last week sometimes it's accessibility accessibility meaning like I don't really want to go I don't want to get on the apps. I don't really want, I don't have time. I don't want to like, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to go searching for somebody Mm -hmm. Um, because why? Like when, if I really want to get off, I've got this right here. (laughs) (laughs) Don't forget this. Yeah. I mean, well, right. Right, right. Uh, well, to, okay. So for those Peter. that are watching the video, David's referencing Rosie Palmer and her five sisters, as we used to say a long time ago. Um, so he's referring to it like his hand and Jeff's referring to like devices. Like we now have more accessibility to things that did not exist when we were younger. Like your imagination was like the main thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially because of like print media, when we were probably in our teens before we like moved out on our own, we didn't really have accessibility to film. Um, And so everything was kind of a a two dimensional still image. If you saw it in a magazine or, you know, something along those lines. (laughs) Right. And so, you know, it's like, and now like literally while the three of us are talking, I guarantee someone somewhere is beating off 
to video somewhere, if not making it themselves or broadcasting right. it live. Like that's just the world that we live in now. All of the above. <laughs> yes. Yay, Chatter Baden Hempster Live. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and so because of that, I think the world is very different now in terms of like your outlets, your, mm-hmm. your options when it comes to that. Uh, the you thing I to have I, to wait, like sometimes when you're, you know, ordering porn, you had to wait like a week or two <gasps> to like get the DVD. Well, and I was going to say the VHS tape, but yeah. Or that too. Yeah. <laughs> You know, you had to wait a while to get right. it and then, you know, wait until, you know, wait until dark or whatever, or, you know, pop it in right then there, whatever you want to do. I don't, I'm not judging. Right. Um, mm-hmm. And then, but now, like, just type it in. And, and, and not only that, like you're getting access for little to no money. Um, you're not forking into cash. Not saying don't like. Please pay, pay your, you know, pay for your porn. Pay for um, professional porn. Yeah. Um, but but, that, like, but but that's also changed, right? The landscape of what's professional mm-hmm. versus amateur. Literally, mm-hmm. I could be watching my neighbor three doors down, and not necessarily know that it's them, because they're like making content but covering up their face, baby. Mm-hmm. And unless I know something about them, I may not know that this hot daddy that I'm watching, you know, jerk, <laughs> is literally a penis that is like, you know, a hundred feet away from me or whatever. Mm-hmm. That happens to be a fantasy of mine. Anyways, um, <laughs> I don't know is what that it is your... that I have I this thing it. about like wanting to like, you know, Are you're watching a video or looking at someone like live camming and you recognize like a tattoo or a birthmark or well, something. I mean, that, that's happened a couple of times that I've recognized, like, but it's not a neighbor. You know what I mean? That's it's what like, I mean. Oh, like, kind of, but there's a part of me that's like, I've, I guess there's a, there's a, there's a feeling that I've had for a very long time. It's like, there are a lot of repressed men out there who just want to get off. And there's a part of me that's like, I'm willing to be the, the, like the mechanism the for that. <laughs> right. And I'm like, so, you know, like, if you live in my neighborhood and that's, you know, anyways, totally off topic. topic. Anyways. No, it's not. Is that a new, (laughs) is that something new that has happened as you've gotten older? Or is Um, it something that's kind of always been there? Because it kind of falls into the accessibility, like, it's right there. It's two houses down. Well, I, I mean, when I guess I never the really... App f- they say they're only zero miles away. Well, I, I mean, I, I guess the, the thought for me is, like, I never thought of it much when I was younger. Yeah, I never really fantasized about my neighbors when I was younger. Um, or thought much about it. Um... Now that I'm older, I guess that's the thing I think about. But that's also probably because of the change of technology. Like, I know there are apps, there are websites. Like, so I know there are people around me who are horny. End of story. Mm-hmm. Like, they just exist. Because why wouldn't they? It's it's part of the human experience. Right. Um, and men are far more, like, uh, I don't even know what the wording is I want to say. I don't want to say sexually active. They're just more amped up. Um, I was talking with somebody recently who was having this conversation with me and I, and I, and I, I don't know if I connected with them, but I said, you are not the first person who has informed me as a trans man that you are, you have experienced a parallel thing that I've heard over and over again. I'm not saying this is true for all trans men, but a vast majority of them, when they're going through HRT, They one the one thing I hear consistently is that they're not ready for the horniness, (laughs) like like how it changes them and how they just have this like hunger or this like like this insatiable like thirst or what like need to have sex. Right. And and it's interesting. And I talk about it with them 
because I said, isn't that uh, kind of amazing that you, not that you have to have this experience, but that like you might have some insight as to why people behave the way they behave. Right. Why the stereotype of men are that we're horny bastards. Right. Because we are. Like, and it may be, and part of it could be, you know, because of hormones. Um, so that is to say that knowing now with the advancement of technology that, you know, that there are people who are just like, you know, horny and that they want to, you know, get off. I think that is, you know, an intriguing aspect of getting older and thinking about that. Like when I was much younger, I used to look at a lot of men and try to imagine them naked. Mm hmm. Like, because I just didn't have much experience or outlet or, and now like my brain is probably over capacity with the amount of like naked men's bodies I've seen in my lifetime. And that's purely <laughs> because of the technology, you know, I'm not, I'm not going around and looking at naked men all the time in the world. I'm seeing it in a digital realm. Like, so it's still photos, it's video, it's gifts, it's, you know, whatever. And they are of all shapes, sizes, kinds, like ages, you know, you name it. And so I find that interesting how things have changed now. And, and we are at this age now where it's like you can pretty much see anything. Mm -hmm. and, and it's not far away in yeah. terms of like you reaching out into the digital world, so to speak, to to obtain that. And so I guess that is a part of like our a of our aging, like of getting older in terms of like sexual activity is like maybe that is part of the future is that we don't we may not be not only our generation, but like future generations may not be as active just because of the outlets. Yeah. It's funny. I there's so I'll I'll preface this by saying I went to bear run. I went to a bear run recently, mm -hmm. but I was watching, I was looking at, so some of these bear runs have chats. Mm -hmm. um, Telegram is a wonderful tool. We have a chat there as well. Um, and one of the things I was noticing a lot of that I remember just, you know, 10 years ago, what that what wouldn't have happened. There was a lot of like, pre-conversations about like hooking up and connecting and mm -hmm. everything before the event had even happened months in advance of the event even happening mm -hmm. um, having these conversations and i was looking at who was saying it and a lot of it was the younger ones mm -hmm. um you know and we've got like only fans and just for fans and like all that stuff and like that was the whole thing like they were wanting to not just hook up but looking to like um collaborate and make collabs and and have um you know record each other doing stuff to each other so they can did post it on their individual sites and and you know get a little coin and mm -hmm. it i was having like i had a moment where i was like why is this a thing and why am i so upset about it and i was a little upset and i don't know mm. and i was trying to figure out why and i, I realized why i was because I didn't have that ability. Mm. Right? Like I didn't get I didn't have that freedom as it were. You know, back in my day kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Like um and this almost nonchalant not caring about the repercussions um way of thinking is intriguing to me um that you know they were just like they're like we're gonna like they're putting it all out there they're putting like what they want to do they're talking with people maybe during in the in the chat but then maybe taking it elsewhere and having maybe more like actually setting up the details and it just i was like wow it it bothered me and didn't realize i know why it's bothering me it's because i didn't get to i didn't get mm -hmm. to do that I wouldn't have had an opportunity. And now I'm at the point where I don't feel comfortable doing it. <laughs> if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And, and realizing that, and now like 
uh, on the flip of it, now kind of doing work for a site, you know, um, I'm on, you know, I've been, I've mentioned it before, I've done uh, modeling for Wolfbound, um, but that's not necessarily sexual. Mm-hmm. It's more kink driven. Um, and not having a problem with it per se, but like it, it felt, it feel it's the same thing, but not. That makes sense. Like it, it's, it's, I'm still doing something, you know, and it's getting put out there for anyone and everyone who has access to see. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's, it's, it's work, it's that kind of thing, but it's not exactly the same thing because these people are actually doing it and actually having sex and showing it to people. Right. Yeah, I, I mean, I do think that there's a change that has come along over time, and who knows where it will be in another 20 to 30 years now. I remember in the past decade, there's been conversations about, like, at some point in the future, there will be a president of the United States who has had their nakedness on the Internet, if not have have a quote-unquote sex tape. Mm-hmm. Like, and and I found that really interesting because it's been a discussion, kind of in in um, employment circles in terms of HR and stuff. I remember a few years ago before the pandemic, there was this whole thing like, the youth don't understand that everything on the internet is now a record, and when you go to apply for a job, an employer was going to look up your shit and see like where all your stuff is online. And mm-hmm. I see that from our generation now, every once in a while, a joke about like, you know, well, back in our day, we didn't have the Internet. So there's no proof of the stupid shit we did. Um, <laughs> and I and I think that also relates to, you know, our sexual activities, you know, unless you had a camcorder and actually filmed to tape like what you did, there was no proof of that. Like it was just. And, and to now probably had to have that tape put somewhere digitally because the tape will eventually um, right. corrode corrodes the word came to mind but yeah it'll it'll degrade degrade, degrade. Yeah. thank you that's the word i was looking for it eventually won't be worth anything i mean it not that it technically has value now but you won't even be able to play it like it'll just like disintegrate and fall apart and all that jazz mm-hmm. but yeah I, I i mean i think that is you know an interesting perspective about like the change of time and um where those things are. I hear you, Damon, on like the, 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 I don't know if I want to call it FOMO, mm-hmm. but the, the reality that things are just different. I see younger individuals, couples. Um, I see these groups of friends who like get together and do things and they'll like spend a Saturday or a Sunday just like hanging out and playing games or watching movies or whatever. But there's also this whole other layer on it that they like post pictures or little videos and stuff of like them having fun. And by having fun, I literally mean like they're playing with each other. They're like, you know, having sex with each other. But it's not like, uh, I don't know how to explain it. It's not as like intense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's just like, oh, we're goofing. Like, we're having fun. I'm sucking my friend's dick. No big deal. Like, it, it, it's much more passive, I guess. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. And so, because I think an orgasm may not necessarily be the goal. And I realize I'm saying that, like, with a question. Because, <laughs> but it is a different mindset, though. But, I mean, I guess that may also be something that, you know to consider as you get older it's like how important is it that you have an orgasm or is it more like are have we moved into i realize i'm changing and shifting but like is it more about like quality than quantity like is that a natural progression of like youth to becoming older is like when you're younger you're like quantity 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 you're like trying to like you know taste all the asses suck all the dicks like you know try to 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 see you know all those options. Mm -hmm. But as you get older, you're like, I don't really need to, you know, have so many notches on the bedpost, so to speak, as we used to say. So we've used the, the um, analogy of it being like a banquet. 
-hmm. or like a buffet. We'll use a buffet. Smorgasbord. Smorgasbord. I like buffet. I'll use buffet. Many, many food buffet. things to choose amongst, I guess. Right. Yes. So probably when you were like, you remember when you were a kid and you hit the buffet, like you wanted this, 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 and this and that and everything. And you put it on your plate and then you, you ate as much of it as you could. And you got yourself sick sometimes and la, 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 la. As you've gotten older, you don't need to eat everything. Mm. Don't need to have all the things. You know what's good and not so good for you. Not necessarily just like for like health or whatever. You're just like, I really don't like that old ass macaroni and cheese that's sitting in that plate. Like, I don't, I don't want that. Or I don't want oh. that soup. Because, oh, gross. Blasphemy. Yeah. Right. So, so you just go for the things you want. Mm. As opposed to like going after everything and seeing what sticks. Right. You go after what you want. You go. Well, some might say that you've refined your palate. Right. That you've like, you've had these experiences and you're like, okay, I don't really care for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's not my thing. So I'm not right. really going to do that. Like, um, and to be fair, I mean, I think that's kind of happened for us in some aspects because to this day, consistently, I am not interested in a, in a small framed thin individual, like just, just not. And there's nothing wrong mm -hmm. with that there for, I, I look at it this way. I used to say this for a long time. It's like, I'm not interested in having sex with women and that's great. Do you know why? Because there are people who do, whether they be women or men or in between non-binary, I don't care. Someone will be interested in what I'm not interested in. <laughs> I guess it's like the way I've always looked yeah. at it. So I feel that way still to this day that there are people, you know, that are interested in, in certain individuals or body types or whatever. And I'm like, great, have at it. Cause that's not, that's not my thing or my interest. Yeah. Like for me, um, one of the big things that has kind of become a major, I, I just, I'm not even going to bother anymore um, is References to our request about BBC are mm. just like flat out just asking me to fuck them. Like, because no, I, I, no, I'm just not, I'm not into it like I used to be. That used to not be a thing. For, like, it what, didn't bother me at all back in the day. Now I'm just like, meh, you don't, you don't want me. Right, right. Like, that's kind of what it comes down to. Like, you don't right. want me. You want the dick. And that's all you want. You don't, you're not caring about anything else. Right. And that's kind of for me where it's like, well, no, I'm good. And, and I, I agree with you on that because I'm on the other end of that, that I still to this day, just the past, what, 24, 48 hours, got a message on an app out of nowhere. And... I, I'm hesitating to say this because I realize it's sort of part of a stereotype, but it's my experience. I get like messages with pictures and they're like, and and it's what you're talking about, Damon. It's on the other side. It's you want this big black cock. And I'm just like, I don't even know you. Like, I didn't reach out to you. Like, I didn't say anything. There is nothing in my profile that says right. this is what I'm seeking or whatever. Like, you're just. Mm hmm. Kind of no, shit with my mean. face. And I'm literally. Like, literally. And I'm like, delete. <laughs> yeah. Like I don't it's I don't it's, respond. I get it. it. Whatever. Like it it always has been. I mean, and in recent years it's been more of an, an like an irritation almost. Like mm. I just and on certain sites, and I'll own up to it because it's kind of weird. My, pic, the, my, my, my first picture is my dick. Like, I'm just going to call it what it is. Like, it's there, right? So it's there. Okay. But I am not telling you. I immediately, in my profile, I have everything down. Like, I, I tell you what I'm looking for, what I'm not looking for. And if your response is, you know, whatever, whatever. I'm like, well, I don't really, you know, I don't want to deal with that. I don't want to answer that. I don't want to be around that. Mm -hmm. I don't need that energy in my life. And I don't have time for that. 
But that makes it sound like you and I are expecting people to read. And I've been told for decades now that that is a silly notion and people don't read. Well, that's on them. (laughs) I hear you. We just need to make sure they're not too long. But even that, it's like, you can't even glance at the profile. Come on. Yeah. Like one of the first things I look at at every profile is what is on there. Because the main thing I'm looking at, and and this is me because I've been almost burned by it before. I need to know how fucking old you are. I'm sorry. I need to know your age and it needs to say it in your profile. Mm. That's like number one. <laughs> like right. A number one. Because I'm not getting, I'm not having a conversation with someone that possibly could be underage. I understand in this day and age, wanting to be out there and wanting to like learn. I get it, but I'm, I'm not the one. Well, I find it interesting that you say that, Damon, because it just occurred to me as I get older people will easily know my age because of my online moniker. Like Mm -hmm. my, my nickname reveals my age constantly, but as I get older, it will possibly work against me because if, because if you didn't know the 73 and you just knew me as Gare Bear, like, you wouldn't probably think much about age, but if you see the 73 in another five to 10 years, people will probably be doing the math provided they know how to do math and they will, you know, without a calculator, I mean, this is what I'm saying. <laughs> um, you know, they will, they will be able to figure out like, Oh, you're getting oh. up there. Like you're AARP. You're going to be, you know, Ooh. you're going to be in retirement. Shit. What? It's true. I mean, I'm not, I'm, yeah, yeah. Not motherfucker, set, motherfucker sent me a notification that I could join early. <laughs> I was like, y'all wait your turn. <laughs> Anyways, that was a total tangent. No, but I, I mean, like, I didn't think of that till just now when you were talking about, like, you want to make sure they are of age. And I'm thinking the other direction. I'm like, oh, but, you know, in a few years, people are going to easily be able to know my age and I will no longer be in the median, I will be moving towards like the end, so to speak. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I I think there's, there's a lot to be said about like, as we age and how things do change. Um, I think our priorities change. I think they shift. I think the frequency changes, but that isn't to say that that's, that, that that's true across the board. There are individuals who, are not active at all. And then there are other individuals who are very active. Um, And it's interesting because when I was in my thirties and I would see somebody in their sixties, I would be like, Oh, they're twice my age. Like, and that would be a thing that I'd have to think about. But as I'm getting older and I look at their age and I'm like, Oh, they're not that much older than me. Yeah. Five years, 10 years, 12 years. And, like, when we're younger, we think of, like, oh, a 20-year-old with, like, a 45-year-old. Like, you know, we're part of that generation where that was sort of scandalous, you know, because, like, you know, they're old enough to be their parent, um, even though they were grown, you know, full-functioning adults. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think society has sort of moved away from that in a way. Um, Not completely, but – and now I think about that in terms of, like, when I look at someone and I'm like, oh. So now I may find myself being attracted to somebody who's retired. Mm Mm-hmm. Because they are. End of story. You know? Um, It's different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think Carl was 12 years older than I was when I moved down here. Mm. Sam is 16 years older than me. So that's it's something to like you We've we've had this conversation jokingly sometimes in the past. Um, I'm at the age now that he was when we first met. Mm, okay. 
So it's kind of an interesting, like, you know. Right, because you two have been together longer than the distance of your ages. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's something to, like, you don't think about until you have to think about it. Right. Because, um, yeah, you know. And I do think that's something that comes with greater frequency as you age, as you, you think about those things and you pay attention to that stuff. Like I, I think about like when I go out and I see younger people, like probably I'll think of it when I go to pride this year, I will see a whole other generation or two below me. And I will think about things differently mm -hmm. when s witnessing them and how they are living their lives. In comparison to me, I may find some parallels, but I may also see some new and different things. Right. So, yeah, it's rather interesting to me, the like thinking about this and realizing. Like you were saying, like, I'm going to be to the point where I'm going to be fig figuring out things like that Jim was figuring out with me. Mm -hmm. Maybe with someone else. I don't know. Um, hmm. Maybe we have a conversation. Jim and I. <laughs> <laughs> well, just it, 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 it's just something that you don't think about until you're in the middle of it, in the midst of it, as it were. Yeah. Too true. I know so many couples... Um, like through the chorus that have been together for 20, 30 years. And it's, mm -hmm. I don't think of it that way until it's brought to my attention. Like right. couples that have been together for so long, like they, they must know. It's just interesting to think of where they are and where they were kind of what we've been having this conversation we're having. What is what is all this going to mean from we're we're talking more of a sexual standpoint, but like I'm thinking more along the lines of just life standpoint. Right. Well, it, and it's interesting because when I was younger. I think I it, well, I well, I was older personality by my age, like when I was in college, everyone talked about how like. I acted a lot older than my age. Mm -hmm. And like I was always around adults, not my own age group, so to speak. Um, and I I figured out like because that's because of how I was raised. Like I was the oldest of the grandkids and there was nobody else around me in my neighborhood or anything. So like I was always around adults. So I just naturally mm -hmm. gravitated to that. And I guess I had, you know, developed an older mindset or behavior and all that kind of jazz. Um. I forgot where I was going with this. It, so the the thing is, is that I think that was a factor for me in, in looking at stuff. I know what it was. So when I was in my 30s, especially, and then in my 40s, like, I didn't think much about, like, older men. I didn't have anything against it, but I didn't think that much often about it. But the past handful of years, I've really noticed, like, well, I used to see an older man, especially if he had, like, silver or white like you know whether it be temples or a beard or whatever like i might you know pay attention or, or that but now more than ever like i kind of clock that but i clock it in a way that i'm like oh okay and like as a whole like <laughs> just for the two of you in the audience just hang on because this is going somewhere um <laughs> this because i'm gonna i'm gonna bring in something that's unexpected so this weekend um, when we're recording was uh star wars celebration europe 2023 and uh so i've been watching a lot of videos and stuff and live streams that have been going on over there because there's a lot of like lucasfilm uh revelation like new announcements and like you know panels and cast interviews and all sorts of shit that's going on so they released a trailer for ahsoka the new mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. series is coming to disney plus this august baby there is a possibly questionable not so good guy might be a Sith Lord, but he is fine as fuck. 
He is a zaddy. <laughs> he has white beard. Like, and just he has an orange lightsaber. Like, he just looks so fucking hot. And I'm just like totally like lusting over this man. And like, and I've seen him like out of like character or whatever. Like I saw it watch the video today. And I was like, if he would just put on about 40 to 50 pounds, <laughs> like, <laughs> because in character, he looks pretty bulky, but he's wearing a costume and it like kind of has some armor to it. And he and, and I and it's all black, so you kind of can't tell. At least I couldn't from watching. But like, and then when I saw him, I was like, I was like, oh man, you are you are really a modern day Ernest Hemingway, but you are mm. more trim like he, he's he's built well i'll put it that way but there's a part of me that's like but i like a man but i can kind of grab onto so there's a part of me that's like that's why i was making the joke I'm like put a couple pounds on like you know but yeah so no but like so the whole thing is like I, like i paid attention to this you know and like dean dubois has like been mm-hmm. been a heartthrob kind of thing for a number of years you know and then his beard has like you know kind of gone white um and so I think about those things and ter- like I'm, I'm catching myself as I've been aging. Like I find older men who I used to probably in my past think of them as distinguished. Like mm. um, now I'm kind of like, hey, y'all want to you want to have some fun? Uh, <laughs> and I guess I'm saying that I'm just catching on to where both of you have been. Overall, these years, <laughs> given probably fair. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. It's not probably fair. That's fair. Yeah. So yeah, the younger ones yeah. got into it more than the older ones. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, <sighs> besides, that's... you're interested in men your own age. Well, that is that is interesting, right? Like, I I never quite. I didn't spend a whole lot of time like thinking about age other than when I I know when I was in my twenties, it was like, I wanted nothing to do with anybody who was in their twenties. I was like, hell to the no, you have to prove your maturity. And most of you ain't it. So I want someone 30 year older. Mm -hmm. Like that was an absolute thing. Wow. And then when I got into my thirties and then in my forties, like, I guess it's diminished more and more over time. And now I'm kind of like, it's so Funny that you say that, Gary, because that's very similar to me. Um, although when I was in college, it, I, I didn't care. Like um, I haven't cared this was... entire time. I don't know what you guys' problem is. <laughs> <laughs> I used to not when I when I started doing profiles after I graduated college. It was very clear to me I did not want someone like my age. Um, Granted, this was 20. So I usually, I didn't say I wanted like 30 and up or anything like that, but I was definitely like, I don't like 21 and over is my, like what I put down in most of our files. Um, because I did not, I was mature or for um, my age. And I found, I gravitated more towards people who were older. Mm-hmm sometimes much older. I didn't care if they're a young, dumb, full of cum or uh, old, old, fun, and full of cum. That works. As long as they're full. Yeah. No. <laughs> they <laughs> left I full. I, I, I just yeah. wanted, I, it, it was, I was trying to figure out kind of like the reverse of young, dumb, full of cum. And, but still with the full of cum part. <laughs> Didn't work very well. All right. I tried. All right. I tried. Maybe it's the the age and the memory that's getting to you. Maybe that's what it was. What? Huh? <laughs> Did you say something? <laughs> no. You know, no. I like to to say I like the young, dumb, full of cum, more old, fun, and full of cum. Wait, I don't think that works very well. You know, that's exactly what you just said, right? I was just going to say, David, that was, that we've progressed into the repeating ourselves because we don't remember what we just said. Yeah, that was the joke, Damon. <laughs> oh, Lord. 
it was brilliant. It was fucking oh. brilliant. I was like, <laughs> I'm like, either Jeff's doing a bit or he really doesn't know that he just said that. Nope, that was a bit. That was a bit. Oh. Thank you, Gary, for noticing there was a bit. Oh my god! Thank, thank well, you, Damon, for not knowing it was a bit because that was funny. no, it was so, it was so good. Bravo. I was like, did he? <laughs> I was really not sure. I was like, okay, good okay, yes, good for you, good one. That was really good. To show that, can tell. That's mm-hmm. right up. That's right up there with where I put my keys. Where are my glasses? Like, <laughs> hold on, I need to adjust my teeth. <laughs> Oh, my goodness gracious. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm getting tired. Yeah. I I think we're good to wrap. (laughs) Uh, So, folks, that that is the end. We (laughs) we end on a few jokes about how old we are. Why do we have that 30 there? Yeah, sure. Back around. Anyways, if you have any comments, are you getting older? What do you think about older people? Are you younger and like older people? Do you like? Are, are you afraid of what will happen when you get older? Trust me, it's mm. fine. It's fine. Things change, just like your eating habits, etc. But uh, send us your comments. You could do that on our blog at comesoutloud.com. Shoot us an email at comesoutloud at gmail.com or leave us a voicemail. We'd love to hear your voice at 361 Talk. That's 361-265-8255. You don't need to leave your name if you don't want to. We're okay with anonymous call callers. There was an eye wiggle in there for those people listening to the podcast. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at Cubs Online in the pro- appropriate places of the URL. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, you can also join us in our entourage chat at bit.ly slash telegram dash col. Or if you want to know when we're planning on recording these shows, you can check it out at bit.ly slash calendar dash col. You can pop over to our merch store and get some merchandise. Uh, new stuff. Stuff shirts coming uh, this way. I've actually teased it with some of my in one of my discords. I is very excited. I is very excited. Uh, they have been submitted. We're just waiting for them to actually hit the hit the store. And actually go up. Keep in mind that some of them are rated higher than G so they're not out of if they don't automatically appear log in or apparently there's a way not being logged in you can adjust the setting of what you see do R probably be best intent uh, and actually some of the new designs as well as some old designs were designed by Smashy you can find more of his work at tpublic.com slash user slash Smashy the bear uh, you can also become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud or send us a donation at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. Please pop over to your podcast player that you're listening to this to unless you're watching the YouTube video. But in any of those places, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, please uh, rate us, review us. The more you do that, the more in the algorithm, the more people find us. You can find me anywhere on the internet as box tech, box puppy, box uh, box something or other, although I don't really say much on social media. Occasional retweet on Twitter. Damon. Um, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at Stater Cub79. That's T H E A T R E C U B 79. Um, on most bear related bear related sites are on Facebook. Or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. That Twitter is definitely not safe for work. If you want safe for work, use DMA Gamer 79. Gary. And if you would like to find me anywhere online, pretty much uh, type in Care Bear 73. And because his age. <laughs> and with that. Fuck you. <laughs> Say good night, everybody. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> Have a good one, y'all. Bye. Hey,
take you anywhere.